Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Philippines, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Ladies and gentlemen, the Philippine National Anthem. Please remain standing for the invocation to be led by the Chief Chaplain Service Armed Forces of the Philippines, Brigadier General Tirso A. Dolina, AFP. A call to prayer. Sovereign people, sovereign nation, let us offer our prayer. In freedom and in peace, let us worship God alone, the Almighty, most gracious, merciful, and forgiving. Almighty God, source of all graces and blessings, in humility we praise and thank you as we raise the attention of our minds and the devotion of our hearts to your sacred presence to pray for the Philippine Air Force on this change of command ceremony. And this tradition of succession ensures the leadership for the accomplishment of the mission. Sanctify this event, O God, with your blessing, for this is a testament of our deep faith in you as we live our oath and our mandate to protect the people and to secure the state. And so we beseech you, O God, to inspire us so that each one will derive from this event the enlightenment, the moment, and the memory that we envision. Because persons are gifts, and every vocation and position that you bestow to every man is a fulfillment of your divine plan. For we firmly believe that everything, O God, happens for a reason, because the future is in your hands. Thus there are times when we make our destiny, and there are times when destiny makes us with your providence and grace, O God. So accept the beseech, O God, our sacrifices and accomplishments in the past, and our plans and programs for the future. And these are our humble offerings to serve the Filipino people as we faithfully abide with our core values of honor, service, and patriotism. With sincerity, we implore your distinct benediction on our Commander-in-Chief, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Finally, may the God of life, the God of providence, the God of our history and destiny, 
bless, protect, and prosper every Filipino, now and forever. Amen. You may now be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the Philippine Air Force Change of Command Ceremony. We shall now proceed to the presentation of award for the outgoing Commanding General Philippine Air Force. May we invite Lieutenant General Galileo Gerard R. Quintanar Jr. AFP to proceed in front for the presentation of award. May we request Colonel Ferdinand L. Torres, PAFGSC, Assistant, the Adjutant General AFP, to read the citation of award. Republic of the Philippines, Dep Department of National Defense, General Headquarters, Armed Forces of the Philippines, Camp General Emilio Aguinaldo, Quezon City. General Orders Number 1518 published on 21 December 2018. Award of the Philippine Legion of Honor, degree of commander. By direction of the President, pursuant to paragraph 2A.2B, section 1-2, chapter 1, Armed Forces of the Philippines, regulations G131-054, these headquarters, dated 26 June 2014. The Philippine Legion of Honor in the degree of commander is hereby awarded to Lieutenant General Galileo Gerard Rio Quintanar Jr., Officer Das 9216, Armed Forces of the Philippines, for imminently and meritorious service rendered as the 35th Commanding General, Philippine Air Force, Armed Forces of the Philippines, from 24 October 2017 to 05 December 2018. By order of the Secretary of National Defense, Official Benjamin R. Madrigal, Jr., Lieutenant General, Armed Forces of the Philippines, Chief of Staff, signed Maximao Ignacio, Brigadier General, Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Adjutant General. May we request our presiding officer, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, to confer the award. He will be assisted by the Secretary of National Defense, Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, and Deputy Chief of Staff for Personal J-1, Major General Erickson R. Gloria, AFP, and Dr. Maria Marlene M. Quintanar. Thank you, Mr. President. Please be seated. We shall now proceed to the change of command ceremony. May we call on Colonel Ferdinand L. Torres, PAF General Staff Corps, Assistant, the Adjutant General AFP, to read the relief and designation orders of the outgoing and incoming Commanding General, Philippine Air Force, respectively. Jar Headquarters, Armed Forces of the Philippines, Camp General Emilio Aguinaldo, Quezon City. Your orders number 1393, published on 05 December 2018, Section 1, Paragraph 1, Termination. 
designation of Lieutenant General Galileo Gerard Rio Quintanar Jr., Officer Das 9216, as Commanding General, Philippine Air Force, is terminated effective 05 December 2018. Section 2, Designation. Lieutenant General Rosano Dosado Briggs, Officer Das 9474, is designated as Commanding General, Philippine Air Force, effective 05 December 2018, by command of General Galvez Jr. Official, Gaudencio C. Collado Jr., Vice Admiral, Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Deputy Chief of Staff. Signed, Maximo Ignacio, Brigadier General, Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Adjutant General. May we request Lieutenant General Galileo Gerard R. Quintanar Jr., AFP, outgoing Commanding General Philippine Air Force, to deliver his remarks and subsequently read and sign his relinquishment order. Our presiding officer and commander-in-chief, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, sir. Senior public officials led by Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, sir. The local executives of Pasay City led by Congresswoman Emmy Calixto Rubiano. The AFP leadership led by the Chief of Staff AFP, General Benjamin Rasgo Madrigal, Jr. The former Chief of Staff and Commanding Generals of the Philippine Air Force and their ladies. The men and women of the Philippine Air Force, led by the incoming Commanding General, General Rosano Dosado Briguez. And the Vice Commander, General Jose Tanuan, Jr. Distinguished guests, both local and abroad, our partners from the Philippine National Police and Philippine Coast Guard, my family, my mistas and friends, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, magandang gabi sa ating lahat. I stand before you today to bid farewell to a noble profession that has defined my purpose in life. Thank you, Mr. President, for this opportunity of a lifetime to have served in this capacity as Commanding General of the Philippine Air Force for the past 14 months. For a former Army Lieutenant who chased his dream to be an airman, to have conquered the skies as a combat pilot, and to have reached this pinnacle of success through God's abundant grace, I could not have asked for more. I assumed as the 35th Commanding General on the 24th of October last year, on my mother's birthday, with the declaration that blessed is the Air Force, whose God is the Lord, that I will lead the organization with integrity and good example, that I will propel the Philippine Air Force as a blue team at top speed for peace and resilient development. God has been so good and has showered the Air Force with blessing upon blessing. To Him be all the glory. Fourteen months hence, I leave my beloved Air Force under the best of circumstances. It is truly blue brave, loyal, united, exemplary. The PAF today is the most disciplined, best-led, and properly managed service arm in the AFP. Its 98.41% performance rating of excellence conferred by the Inspector General last August is the highest in the armed forces this 2018. It has the least number of discipline, law, and order cases 
among the major services with 82 and is almost drug-free with only one violator who has already been discharged among its more than 18,000 personnel. It now has a fully functional fighter base inaugurated during Balikbasa last October 24. The fighters have returned to their homes, their nests after 27 long years or since the Mount Pinatubo eruption. The Air Force is the best civil disturbance management unit among the uniformed services in the AFP and the Philippine National Police. It emerged triumphant as the best shooter in the SWAT challenge in Davao early this year. It even prides itself as the best men's volleyball team today, having won the recent tournament televised nationwide and has amongst its ranks Sergeant Heidelin Diaz, a world champion weightlifter. In terms of systems, your Air Force today has a completely functioning PAF Integrated Logistics System, or PAFILS, that keeps a real-time inventory of its assets. It prides itself of the Commercial Claims Payment System, or the CCPS, which provides a real-time monitoring of its fiscal resources, where every peso is properly accounted for. Its internal communication and messaging system, called Top Speed, is evolving that enables the sharing of information in a very secure manner, which is critical to decision making. Its integrated human resource management information system is close to completion, which will comprehensively answer to the needs of the Air Force and its airmen, from recruitment to retirement or from womb to tomb. Your Air Force has greatly enhanced its capability for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance through the use of modern equipment such as the Scan Eagle, the Caravan 208, and the Sabir system. All of these new hardware were sourced from the United States, our main security ally, which have effectively been employed for combat operations and a tool for rapid damage assessment and needs analysis during disasters and calamities. Your Air Force has optimized the government procurement system in a very transparent and efficient manner. Adherence and faith in the procurement system has been translated to the timely delivery of its demand requirements. It has sustained the force. This has enabled the PAF to wield air power with 70% of its aircraft flying daily, answering to the mission requirements of the different commands, the unified commands, and general headquarters, 98% of the time within one hour. Missions that saved lives, supported our troops, defeated our enemies, protected our fellow men, and most importantly, kept the peace. The bottom line, our Air Force today has integrity. It has performed quite well in service to God, country, and people. It is led and managed by professional airmen through good example and proper governance. Team Air Force has charted this year a revitalized flight plan that will propel it to be a more capable and credible organization responsive to national security and development. With deep gratitude to the Multisectoral Governance Council, led by Attorney Sir Gibo Chiodoro, the Air Force has been given sound advice to push the flight plan. Through the help of our friend, Air Marshal Leo Davis of the Royal Australian Air Force, whose organization is evolving as a fifth-generation force, the Philippine Air Force has launched Plan Velocity with 16 key strategic initiatives that will firmly enable the Air Force to be more capable, more relevant, and more modern into the future. I will leave my beloved Air Force that is poised to reap the fruits of hard work, 
and good relations forged, nurtured, and developed this year. For next year, 2019, will be rich in harvest, a defining year that will see the Air Force emerging as a team, significantly transformed in capabilities, made stronger by empowered personnel, designed to be agile, flexible, and integrated in its operations, and confident that it is more mission credible in executing its missions. Fellow Airmen, members of the Blue Team during my watch, your journey at top speed continues under a new leadership. It comes at a time when our Air Force is primed for greater things and ready to meet the higher expectations of the people we serve and protect. 2019 is particularly sweet, a giant leap in our quest to defend our precious skies and keep our nation free. For next year, we await the delivery of the following. Two Cobra attack helicopters from Jordan with a little push from our National Security Advisor, General Hermogenes Esperon. Thank you so much, sir. Six Super Tucano close air support aircraft from Brazil. Two fixed wing command and control aircraft. Two radar systems from Israel. 13 Hermes unmanned aerial vehicles, again from Israel. The phase one of the integrated command control, communications, and cyber system will also be implemented, which will connect the presidential situation room, the AFP command center, unified command operation centers, the Air Force command center, the Air Force functional commands, the wings, and down to the tactical operations groups. We anticipate to receive the following also next year. Two C-130s and four OV-10s from the United States. 721 million worth of engineering equipment for HADR and developmental work. We also look forward to the conclusion of three big contracts early next year. For 16 Blackhawks from the United States, the best combat utility helicopter in the world today. Six T-129 attack helicopters from Turkey, at par with the best in the world, and three ground-based air defense systems from Israel. At this point, may I present a book to our president entitled Rotors of Liberation by the 205th Tactical Helicopter Wing. It embodies in pictures and words what the unit and its heroic airmen has done in Marawi and aptly captures the essence of the Air Force receiving soon the best helicopters approved by senior leadership. From here, allow me to thank our key stakeholders from government as the Philippine Air Force push and unleash the gains of resilient development. This is the first time in so many years that we have seen a high degree of collaboration and cooperation in pursuit of shared concerns and interests in the name of national security and development. First, the Department of Transportation or DOTR, the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, or CAAP, the Cagayan Economic Zone Authority, or CESA, and the Palawan Provincial Government. In the PAF's quest for strategic basing for air power projection and better areas for training and exercises, the Philippine Air Force has secured a 10-hectare area at Lalo Airport in Cagayan. It has gained a foothold in Giwan Airport in Samar and will soon have Ubay Airport in Bohol. 
It has been gifted with a 300-hectare area in Balabac Island in southern Palawan. It is now building a new airbase in Lumbia Airport in Cagayan de Oro in lieu of Major Danilo Atienza Air Base in Cavite with DOTR and CAAP in the loop because they will transform that area into a hub for general aviation. These additional areas will soon be developed and together with existing PAF bases and stations will strengthen our territorial defense system and guard our patrimony so that our people can explore, exploit, and enjoy them. Thank you, Secretary Artugade, Director General James Hijonko, Under Secretary Lambino, and Governor Jose Chavez Alvarez. Secondly, the local government of Lipa and Pasay City, the Department of Education, the Department of Public Works and Highways, and the BCDA. The Philippine Air Force may have established a template for training and education synergy with the Department of Education and local government executives. Thank you, Congresswoman Vilma Santos and Senator Recto for allocating 423 million pesos this year to relocate three civilian schools, the Fernando Air Base Elementary, the Fernando Air Base High School, and the Philippine College of Aeronautics. The completion of the new buildings next year in a better area in Fernando Air Base will free up critical space for PAF training institutions. Thank you, too, to Congresswoman Emmy Calixto Rubiano for the good asphalted roads of Villamar Air Base, which we enjoy today and the future grandstand of Villamor next year. Thirdly, the local government of Tarlac, the DENR, and the National Commission for Indigenous People. Thank you, Mayor Katakutan of Capas, for your kind understanding and support to adopt a better approach to resolving the issues at Crow Valley, where Colonel Ernesto Ravina Air Base is located. It will pave way to the development of the gunnery range that will benefit the AFP and its allies, the relocation of informal settlers, and the optimization of the area for productive use. Fourth, our allies and friends for elevating the levels of our cooperative arrangement. The engagement with the U.S. has been comprehensive, especially in air defense internal security, and HADR, or humanitarian assistance, and disaster response. Our partners in the ASEAN, particularly with Singapore and Thailand, have increased our appreciation in ISR, air defense operations, and aviation safety. The maritime patrols through our trilateral cooperative arrangement with Malaysia and Indonesia has made our common maritime borders free from piracy and kidnapping. The professional and personal friendships that were cultivated with Australia and Japan have been uplifting. In terms of advice on capability planning and development and addressing shared and common interests in the region. In fact, our close collaboration with Japan will translate to a 5 billion peso donation of UH-1 Huey helicopter spares, which the Philippine Air Force will receive by the first quarter of next year. May I particularly thank General Yoshinari Marumo of the Kuku J. Thai, Air Marshal Leo Davis of the Royal Australian Air Force, General Mervyn Tan of the Republic of Singapore Air Force, and Air Chief Marshal Chuya Pruk of the Royal Thai Air Force. Truly, resilient development works. Strategic partnerships not only translate to better relations, but enhance capabilities and capacities for peace, security, and development. The past month has been 
particularly uh, difficult for me. Well, God is firmly in control. Thank you, Lord Jesus, as my shield, my armor, my redeemer. Your scripture in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 resonates. Cast your worries to the Lord, for He cares for you. Through God's grace, prayers have been answered. I have emerged a stronger and more enlightened man. May I thank my good friends for their prayers and support and for being there for me and my family. Thank you so much, the couples group led by uh, Pastor Veer, the Bible study group led by Brother Rico, my Kabsat, Brother George Campos, and wife Cynthia, and my mentors and big brothers for their wisdom, spiritual advice, and counsel. And may I mention some of them today. Sir Nonay Akot, Sir Pete Kadungog, Sir Oka Rabena, Sir Carlix Dunila, Sir Joe Reyes, Sir Vic Franco, Sir Maki Makapagal, Sir Jeff Delgado, Sir Dex Comendador, my Mista, TJ Tanuan, Henry Reyes, James Molina, and Randy Banse and the OCG and the First Quadrant family. My Mistas, the Sandiwans and the Sandiwatas of the PMA class of 1985, the rock that has kept me steady with courage, integrity, and loyalty. May I request my mistas to please stand to be recognized. Mga sandiwas and mga sandiwatas. Yung mga sandiwatas din. Thank you for being here. Maraming salamat. May I profoundly thank my original family who have stood pat with me through all the years. My late daddy, Gali Quintanar, and my mommy, Lillian. My siblings, Manang Ching and Bambi, adding Jan and Jovi, adding Angel and Irma, and their wonderful kids. I love you all. Finally, my own family, my one and only, the love of my life, my wife, Len. My two bundles of joy and happiness, Janelle and Abby. You are God sent. You are the best. You are my pillars of strength, the personification of faith, hope, and love. And for one last time, as Commanding General, may I express once more my affection to my wife of 30 beautiful years. Len, my hagi, I love you very much. Ginugugma ko ikaw, mahal na mahal kita. And so, my fellow men, members of the Blue Team, Tango Yankee Match for your unqualified support, your big heart, and enduring inspiration. Press on with tapang, galing, at malasakit. Continue to live our core values of integrity, service above self, teamwork, excellence in everything that we do, and professionalism. Always do what is good, what is proper, and what is right, and carry on with a passion in guarding our precious skies and keeping our nation free. Tayo ang tanglaw sa himpapawid. Dilat ang ating mata sa gitna ng dilim. At tayo ay gising para ang ating inang bayan ay makatulog ng mahimbing. As I relinquish my post and finally retire on 14 January 2020, or 13 months from now, may we be on the right side of history, or may history be kinder to all of us. 
temporary our positions may be, and fleeting as we are. We, servant leaders, simply aspire to make this country of ours a better and more peaceful place to live in. May God continue to bless you, Mr. President, in leading our country and people towards a much brighter future. This is Red Baron Tutuan bidding all of you goodbye. Paalam po sa inyo. God bless the Philippine Air Force. God bless us all. Armed Forces of the Philippines, Headquarters, Philippine Air Force, Office of the Commanding General, Colonel Jesus Villamor Air Base, Pasay City, 21 December 2018, Office Order Number 09, Relinquishment of Position. Pursuant to Section 1, Paragraph 1, General Orders Number 1393, General Headquarters, Armed Forces of the Philippines, dated 5 December 2018. I hereby relinquish the position of the Commanding General of the Philippine Air Force, effective 5 December 2018, and I sign with pride and dignity. General Rosano Dosado Briguez, I am now ready to be relieved. May we request Lieutenant General Rosano D. Briguez, AFP, the incoming Commanding General, Philippine Air Force, to read and sign his assumption order. Armed Forces of the Philippines, Headquarters, Philippine Air Force, Office of the Commanding General, Colonel Jesus Villamor Air Base, Pasay City. 21 December 2018, Office Order Number 10, Assumption of Position. Pursuant to Section 2, Paragraph 2, General Orders Number 1393, General Headquarters, Armed Forces of the Philippines, dated 5 December 2018. I hereby assume the position of the Commanding General Philippine Air Force, effective 5 December 2018 and I sign in your presence. We shall now witness the handover of command symbol to be presided by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. The handover of command symbol signifies that Lieutenant General Quintanar Jr. has now relinquished his duties and responsibilities as the Commanding General of the Philippine Air Force. The duties and responsibilities of the Commanding General of Philippine Air Force has now turned over to Lieutenant General Rosano D. Briguez, AFP. Thank you, Mr. President. You may now be seated. Congratulations to the newly appointed Commanding General of Philippine Air Force, Lieutenant General Rosano D. Briguez, Armed Forces of the Philippines. At this juncture, May we invite the newly appointed Commanding General, Philippine Air Force, Lieutenant General Rosano D. Briguez, AFP, to deliver his remarks. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, Commander-in-Chief, Armed Forces of the Philippines, and the 16th President of the Republic of the Philippines, Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, Department of National Defense and His Lady, Ma'am Edith Lorenzana, Lieutenant General Benjamin Madrigal Jr., Chief of Staff, AFP and His Lady, Ma'am Gemma Madrigal, 
Lieutenant General Galileo Gerard Quintanar Jr., former Commanding General Philippine Air Force, and his lady, Dr. Maria Marlene Quintanar, ma'am, and their daughters, Dr. Janelle and Abby Quintanar, and other members of their family, and of course, the members of BMA Class 1985. Secretary Hermogenes Esperon Jr., the National Security Advisor. Secretary Arturo Tabaquero, Presidential Advisor on Military Affairs. Secretary Eduardo Año, Secretary of Interior and Local Government. Secretary Rolando Joselito Bautista, Secretary of Social Welfare and Development. Former Chiefs of Staffs and Commanding Generals of the Philippine Air Force and their ladies. And the widows of our Department Commanding General Philippine Air Force. Admiral Elson Hermujino, sir, Commandant Philippine Coast Guard. Vice Admiral Robert Empedrad, Flag Officer in Command, Philippine Navy and his lady, Mrs. Blessy Empedrad. Lieutenant General Macairo Galberto, sir, Commanding General, Philippine Army, and his lady, Mrs. Joy Alberto. Police Deputy Director General Camilo Pancracios Cascolan, the Chief Directorial Staff, Philippine National Police, and his lady, Mrs. Amelia Cascolan. Proud men and women of the Philippine Air Force, headed by the Vice Commander, Pop Major General Major Jose Tanjuan, Jr., sir, and his lady, Ma'am Daisy Tanjuan. Other members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and their ladies, Members of the Foreign Armed Forces Attaché Corps, members of the PAF Officers and Enlisted Personnel Ladies Club. May I also recognize my family, especially my Nana Isitsit, wife Ellis, sons Darwin Paul and Jan Lorenzo, brother Dr. Marty Briggs and his family, and Manang Lucy. And also, salamat sa aking mga relatives and foster families, the Dosados, the Dumlaus, the Sarates, the Villarreals, the Munoz. Please stand, my foster families and my family, to be recognized. Salamat po. Please sit down. Kabahin kamo sa akong kalampusan. My salute goes to my special guests, my classmate from Sogod Cebu Elementary School, buddy from the former Colegio de San Jose Recoletos ROTC, classmates from the Asian Institute of Management, classmates from the Philippine Air Force Flying School 1988, and of course, Ms. Tas from the PMA Sinagtala Class of 1986, and their lovely spouses. Please stand, all my dear classmates from elementary till now. Thank you. Members of the media, other distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, maayong gabi kanatong tanan. First of all, I would like to thank God for being so good to me and my family that without His providence and handiwork, this ceremony today would never have happened. It is true, I traveled the rocky road and the challenging path. But what a time to humbly receive God's generous gift. Today is even more special as this coincides with the AFP's 83rd anniversary and a day after our 32nd wedding anniversary. I would like to thank President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, sir, Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana, Generals Carlito Galvez Jr. and Generals Benjamin Madrigal Jr. for giving me this opportunity to lead the Air Force. And similarly, I would like to thank Lieutenant General Quintalan Jr. for commanding and steering the Air Force for the past 14 months. Sir, may I give you and the former commanding generals the assurance that all our strategic plans for the Air Force shall remain significant and strong because all of you, all of you have made them so that no single commander can take majority of the credit for those milestones you have achieved for more than 70 years. Words are important to any culture. Aside from linking people together, it reflects norms in a society and generates new insights into people's lives. Similarly, words, when heartily said, provide a formative social force and the power to compel. One optimistic greeting we Cebuanos always use is the word padayon. 
It means move on, or in Tagalog, sulung. Now, as I stand before you and bid my return and reappearance after serving as your Chief of Air Staff and Vice Commander, let me greet all of you, my dear Airmen, Padayon Air Force. In a very profound way, Padayon means continue with what we passionately started. It resonates a call into action, wishing individuals positive impact in perpetuity. And just like what the Bible said, the righteous keep moving forward. There are at least three derivative words of Padayon which will embody my leadership philosophy in the Philippine Air Force. First is Dayonun, which means to immediately make happen and start something right away, continue without delay, and sustain it persistently. Thus, Dayonun offers an antidote to Ningas Kogon and emphasizes the value of making things right and perpetuating such practice. Flight Plan 2028 is a compellingly good plan. It embodied already what our revised AFP modernization program has to offer the Air Force. It also contains our developmental objectives not only in terms of capability buildup, but also on harnessing our competence and capacity. The single most important thing to do is to implement it with speed and accuracy. Kaya mga kapwa kong airmen, Bawal ang mabagal gumalaw, lalo na ang mabagal magdesisyon. Dahil sa bawat minutong naantala ang ating serbisyo, lalo na patungkol sa aeroplano at helicopters, baka buhay pa ang kapalit nito. I do not intend to see the Air Force going through another arduous process of planning because a new leader takes immediate control of the yoke. Time is gold. We need to translate our plans into tangible results, and we must do it now. The simplest action is still better than the most eloquent words. Anchored on Flight Plan 2028, the Air Force shall remain responsive and relevant to the concurrent and future security landscape of the country. We shall perform with excellence in all our mission areas, territorial defense, security, and stability, HADR, and the rest. We will also passionately support law enforcement operations against drug addiction and criminality. The last one is very, very close to my heart. 38 years ago, my tatay, a policeman, was fatally shot by a criminal while performing security role to a fire incident in Cebu City. And that was exactly the reason why I joined the military. And I will not abandon my crusade to promote security and law and order this late in my career. Now that the AFP has the full support of the government, lalo na sa ating mahal na Pangulo, we have the best reasons to perform with brilliance and achieve the progress and modernization we all aspire for. Thus, I encourage you, Dayunun ni Nato, Ipagpatuloy ang masigasig na pag-ata sa ating katungkulan sa bayan, alinsunod sa ating mga plano ng may kakibat na bilis at pagpupunyagi. The second derivative word is dayon or kamin. It means a warm welcome to a shelter and place of refuge for guests to stay, rest, be encouraged, and rejuvenated for the journeys ahead. As your new commander, I am inviting all airmen, dayon kamu. Let us uphold the dignity of our organization and be counted as we achieve significant milestones for our internal reform programs. Let us institutionalize professionalism and good governance at all levels of leadership. Throughout the years, my leadership has always been consistently characterized by results, transparency, and honesty. Kayong mga junior officers, mga airmen, NCO at civilian employees, alam ninyo at naging saksi kayo sa palagi ang bukas na paninilbihan ko sa inyong mga reklamo, hinaing o suwestyon para sa ikagaganda ng Air Force. Ngayon na ako na ang tatay ninyo, ipagpatuloy natin ang ugnayang ito. Tandaan, 
ang hindi nalalaman mahirap desisyonan. Dayon, kamo. After all, the highlight of the PAF's internal reforms will be our continuous adherence to the government's anti-corruption program. The greatest asset of our organization will remain to be our airmen. I envision my personnel to be inspired to serve the nation, perform even better, and pride themselves as part of it because their morale and welfare is the topmost priority. In the same manner, we will endeavor to increase the operational readiness rating of our aircraft. Obligasyon nating protektahan ang ating inang bayan at ibigay ang mga aeroplano at helicopter sa ating mga kapwa sundalong nakikipaglaban sa field at lalo na sa ating mga kababayan nangangailangan sa panahon ng sakuna o kalamidad. To reciprocate the efforts of our personnel, we will undertake sustained development of our air bases, Significant improvements in morale, welfare, and recreational facilities will not only include work and living condition, but also the service we give our soldiers, their dependents, and the civilian employees. Lastly, we science profoundly identifies someone as a kadayong with whom one carries something or shares. Going beyond the Tagalog kasama or the Cebuano kauban, kadayong is more powerful emphasizing the shared or collective responsibility of people. We know that a spectrum of challenges and trials confronts the armed forces as the world responds to emerging trends in violent extremism and cyber threats. The Air Force, notwithstanding our own modernization program, cannot, cannot do it alone. We need a network that will integrate the efforts of individual units in establishing collaborative execution we need you, our valued stakeholders, to be our Kadayong. My experience in Western Command proved the efficacy of the Kadayong concept. The collaborative approach of the provincial government of Palawan, the city government of Puerto Princesa, the other LGUs, the AFP, the PNP, the Coast Guard, the other government agencies, the NGOs, our allied armed forces, the religious sector, the academe, the resort owners, and the rest was so effective that it resulted to the attainment of sustained peace in the entire province. Not only did the tourists continue arriving, but our infrastructure projects in Palawan and Pag-asa Islands went unhampered in their implementation. We will establish the same multi-sectoral networking here in the Air Force. And finally, now that we have covered the present, we can prepare for the future. We have to focus on priority strategic initiatives to transform our organization into a more capable and credible Air Force responsive to national security and development. We have to expand our integrated command and control communication and computer system, advance our integrated air defense system, and commence a genuine self-reliance posture. Kayo ang aking mga kadayong, at sama-sama nating tutugunan ang responsibilidad na nakaatang sa ating mga balikat. Buong tapang kong gagampanan ito dahil alam ko nakasama ko kayo at alam ko rin na sagot tayo ng ating Commander-in-Chief habang matiwasay nating ginagampanan ang ating mga tungkulin sa bayan. Padayon and all is meaning is a call to action. Words that will become part of our language to express our desire to embody our collective optimism. These are words that articulate the continuous, rapid, and inclusive development our government has initiated, and words that will propel each member of the Air Force towards our nation's progress. My airmen, padayon tayo sa pag-perform, padayon ta sa pag-reform, and padayon sa pag-transform. Again, to God be all the glory, Magandang gabi uli sa ating lahat. Thank you, Lieutenant General Briguez.
At this juncture, may we call on Secretary Delphine N. Lorenzana, Department of National Defense, to introduce our presiding officer. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, Mayor Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Thank you. Sit down, please. Thank you for the courtesy. National Defense Secretary Delvin Lorenzana and the other members of the cabinet, AFP Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Benjamin Madrigal, Outgoing Commanding General of the Philippine Air Force Lieutenant General Galileo Gerard Quintanar, the new Commanding General, Lieutenant General Rosano Briguez, Major Service Commanders, Officers, Enlisted Personnel, and Civilian Employees of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a milestone in the history of the Armed Forces as we celebrate Lieutenant General Galileo Gerardo Quintanar's successful tour of duty as Commanding General of the Arm of the Philippine uh, Air Force. Upon assuming command, General Quintanar has been steadfast in accomplishing the Air Force mission, especially in the efforts to fight insurgency and terrorism. Under his able leadership, PAF achieves thousands of flight hours, performed thousands of sorties, ferried most 160 passengers, and airlifted more than 160 pounds of cargo, all in support of our territorial defense and security operations. Under this watch, the Philippine Air Force, with other units of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and other agencies, which resulted in the surrender of arrest of terrorists, the recovery of their firearms, the dismantling of a drug laboratory, the arrest of many drug personalities, and the recovery of millions worth of illegal drugs. During his tenure, General Quintanar has proven his commitment to duty, as highlighted by his valuable contributions ensuring the security during the rehabilitation of Morawi, as well as the humanitarian and relief assistance during typhoons, disasters throughout the years. All these attest to the exemplary leadership of General Quintanar and the collaborative efforts of the valiant men and women of the Philippine Air Force. This has earned them the highest rating of excellence in the whole AFE during the annual general inspection conducted by the Office of the AFE Inspector General. Palakpakanato. Excellent good. General Quintana, your accomplishments speak well of you, how you fulfilled your promise to the Twin Air Force and your duties to the Filipino people. As you hand over the responsibilities of the command to your successor, Lieutenant General Rosano Briguez, you can be assured that the Air Force you will leave is one that is stronger and more empowered. General Briguez, know that you will constantly face threats and challenges as we realize as aspiration for real change and lasting peace. I trust that you will continue the Air Force's advancement through reforms and modernization programs that will transform the organization into one that is responsive to national security and development and a credible external defense force. It is important to engage all stakeholders stakeholders, rather, and communities in fighting insurgency and the spread of extremist ideologies. 
I therefore ask our troops to support the leadership of General Rodriguez and to continue performing your duties as well as intensify our focused military operation against the Cambodian terrorists alongside civil military operations to encourage more members of the communist terrorist groups to surrender. The Filipino people are truly grateful for your service and sacrifice which have preserved the peace and defended the freedom we enjoy today. I continue to ask for your unwavering support so that today I can say that we have created a safer and more secure and truly responsive nation for our children. General Quintanar and General Briggs, mabuhay kayo at mabuhay ang Philippine Air Force. <clears throat> and may I be allowed to just add, this is not mine. This was prepared by somebody else. I'm just reading it, but I'd like to communicate my intentions, my plans, my worries, my headache in running the country. You know, there's uh, a little bit of a rockos there in Congress regarding the abolition or the continuance of the U uh, road user tax uh, board. I believe that the Senate has decided the right thing and has uh, stated that the road tax board has been dismantled. Ever since I assumed office, I've always been worried about this office because it has been the milking cow of people who are corrupt in government. Uh, Ever since, I've really questioned the existence of this office. It's nothing but a depository of money and for corruption. Walang ibang purpose yan. And I agree with the others and the senators that it is time to abolish it and return that function to the DPWH. I side with the Senate and if it comes to a constitutional controversy, the executive department will side with the Philippine Senate in its inter interpretation of the law that the process has been completed, that it has been sent to the Senate for approval, and on time it was signed. This is in the matter of abolishing the road down. Wag na lang natin, uh, you know, I've always been uh, early on sinabi ko na sa kanila ayaw ko talaga yan. But you know, uh, politics and the expediency of uh, everything, nandyan pa yan hanggang ngayon. And uh, I had a talk with President uh, Arroyo, and uh, apparently uh, there was a misunderstanding because all around, I really wanted to abolish the road tax. And Andaya says now that uh, I uh, was uh, one of those who said that it should be maintained. No. Uh, nagkamali sila doon. My feelings about that uh, board is was at its strongest against it uh, being there. So walang ginawa yan kung di makurap. And I see now that uh, it's about time 
na buwagi nila yan. Because if not, and if I side, which I am on the side of the Senate, it would create another constitutional issue and maybe crisis. Wag lang sana. I, I, I hate to say it, but uh, please, uh, if it's a good, for the, good, good for the people, if it's good for the trust deposited on the people and government employees, maybe we'll just go ahead and abolish it. The second is, uh, alam mo, tandaan ninyo to, when, uh, mawala ba wala rin ako, in three years' time, I will uh, step down. Do not entertain dreams of me perpetuating in office or uh, 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 toying with the Constitution. I do not have that plans and I, I will not stay a minute longer. I am as I am in a hurry as anybody else. Na umalis na ako dyan sa trabaho ko. Pagod na rin ako. But uh, when I am, wala na ako dyan, remember, this country cannot move forward for our children and the next three or four generation if we cannot have the law and order in this country. If we cannot destroy the Communist Party of the Philippines, if we cannot stop the drug, the widespread problem of drugs, it will result in a dysfunctional society, believe me. And you will long remember me for that. And the second is corruption. Unless there is a complete stop of robbing government and the people of their money, walang mangyari talaga sa buhay natin. And so, I'm talking now of the retirement of General Quintanar. Alam mo, uh, it is now in the Supreme Court, uh, 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 in Congress after the Supreme Court. Uh, I believe that they are crafting a law which says that uh, the levy money, yung coconut levy, should be returned to the farmers. I'm telling you now, as one of those na meron rin kaming kunting uh, coconut <laughs> farm, it would be nigh well impossible to trace those people who they are. And, where they are now, and whether or not they were really legitimate tenants or just an ordinary guy there in the barangay working for some odd jobs uh, in places where coconut industry was thriving. But uh, I think Congress will insist on that, and it's about 87 billion and you add the interest now, it's going to go up something like 100 billion plus. Now, if it is through course to the Philippine Coconut Board, this is not to, you know, uh, nothing about prejudice or prejudgment. I am not comfortable with all the people in that agency. For historically, historically, it has also been plagued with corruption. So I have asked them to tender resignation as a matter of courtesy. And I want somebody, kailangan ko ng tao na talagang above the rest of the crowd, taong malinis, Kasi bilyon yan. Huwag sanang mawala 
At kung hindi man lang maibigay doon sa mga tao na karapat-dapat maghawak sa pera, then we might as well reserve that money for the future generation of farmers. Kaya sinasabi ko, when we were conferring in the cabinet and I was looking for a candidate to be the chairman who should be someone na talagang maasahan ko na walang mawala baski piso and I have observed him we are not we are casual I do not know General Quintanar but I choose him to be the chairman of that board I don't know him Madam, I know that is was a general that uh, chose to retire early, and that is really no cause to worry. Uh, just a few months, but uh, sabi ko na ilangan ko ng tao, and I am eyeing you. So when the time comes, and if I can get the mechanisms of how the money will be distributed to the beneficiaries. And if I look for somebody na talagang makita ako na ang pera ng Pilipino hindi mawawala, it shall be the retired General Quintana. So. <laughs> hindi ko na lang habain, tapos nabasa ko naman yung speech na hindi akin. Nasabi ko na ang gusto ko. I chose this time, I told the general, Sabigo, would you mind if I make the announcement? It is not uh, premature because the post uh, is vacant. And if you don't get out from there, I can fire you anytime and I replace you. So I believe that the uh, courtesy resignations uh, are there. And maybe I will just ask him to help me. Uh, he can choose the people he wants to serve the uh, sa coconut authority. And ang akin lang naman is to lang eh. All I need, all I require, all I desire, all that I dream of is that people joining me in government is a, he must be utterly honest, and second, that he is competent. Kaya niya ang trabaho niya. Palagay ko pa naman yung aeroplano niya, kalaki-laki yung yawa na yan. Ang hirap yan ito. Ano mo lang, ledger lang man, pati journal. All you have to do is just to keep an eye, and just at the end of the day, Pintahin mo lang yan, look at the papers, and see to it that the Filipino is protected. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Mr. President. Please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine Air Force hymn.
Thank you. Everyone, please be seated. At this point, may we request President Rodrigo Roa Duterte for a photo opportunity in the following sequence. First batch is the President with Lieutenant General Quintanar Jr. and his immediate family. Thank you. Please exit to your right. Lastly, the President with Lieutenant General Briguez and his immediate family. Thank you. Please exit to your right. Thank you very much, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, for gracing this momentous event. We are very honored with your presence. We would like to invite our guests for cocktails at the 250th Presidential Airlift Wing Fixed Wing Hangar. Philippine Air Force bus, coaster vans, and electric cars are available at the main entrance of the PAF Gymnasium. 
Once again, thank you very much, Mr. President. We would like to request all our other guests, please remain on your seats. Once again, we would like to request all other guests to please remain on your seats while our presiding officer leaves the venue. Thank you. Once again, we would like to request all other guests, please remain on your seats. Para sa unang dapat sa bago. 